Hi guys, welcome to The Sling Den. Um, just before we get on with this next episode, I just want to say a massive thank you to all the support that I've been getting. Um, it really goes a long way. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. It just lets me know that you enjoy the content I'm putting out there. Um, I just want to create a platform for people in the Slingshot community to come on, have a chat for you guys to listen to or watch at home. Anyway, today is episode number five. I've got a very special guest. Um, he is the man behind Slingshot World magazine, Adam Rayner. Hi, Adam. How are you doing? Hello, Ben. Very well, sir. I love the little squeak from off. How, <laughs> how, old's, how old's the offspring? The offspring. Small, I heard a small person squeaking. Oh, she's one. <laughs> oh, bless. Could you hear that? <laughs> I, 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 well, this is it. I guess the first bit is who the heck are you? And um, my history is as a hi fi writer um i have ears crooked on my head with extra pointy bits and i listen and you can hear in 3d you know the motorcycle that went past your home early was a two-stroke and, and <laughs> that was a very small person so yeah audio journalist is uh, working in magazines like home cinema choice and uh turbo nut and, and monthlies like max power and fast car magazine i was the jeremy clarkson of car high fire without the misogyny and racism <laughs> um, which is how come i was a magazine journalist and know about words in a row and pictures and that's good enough to go in a magazine, and oh, that wasn't. But I took, you know. So uh, I was just a little bit about who the heck are you as well, which is always a, a good way to start, isn't it? It is. It's great. Um, but I mean, if, if people don't know who you are, they're, they're wondering why you're talking about magazines. Um, <laughs> so well, yeah, uh, actually, I, I, what I'm wearing is the, uh, the rather prime site advertising because it's fatter and wider. I'm the editor of Slingshot World magazine. I'm also the janitor, the publicist, the print orderer, the tea boy, the photographer. Most It's a bit of a vanity project. It's pretty much just me and one genius designer called really cool design. Um, uh, Graham Moorcroft, who is an archer, so he gets catapults and slingshots. And uh, he's a professional magazine designer, does all kinds of stuff like what you've seen real, which is why that man looks so bloody brilliant. Because if you've got some really good ingredients, I mean, really good, that's, that's been called just a miracle of shopping. I think it's more than that. It's important, those ingredients. But then you give them to a really good chef. And, and that is why it looks so damn cool. Every time I get it, I get a little bit emotional how good it looks. Because <laughs> Keith is a genius. He talks about relativity for fun with his mates. It's like, oh, the pop-up uh, kind of stuff. You turn the page and it pops out at you. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, it's just all sorts of, just the way it looks and the design. Of the I, I grew up listening about magazine designs because my mama was a magazine journalist and television person um, and was medical editor of a thing called Woman's Own magazine. Um, and they'd be redesigning it every now and again. They always kept her. She worked for them as a freelance for 30 years. Um, and uh, so I'm second generation magazine journalist. So I, I kind of know about how they all work and, and tick, which is kind of sad because magazines have just been disappearing. And what I've, always wanted to do with my one was turn it into something that was, or create something that was a collectible basically so that you'd want to keep it mm -hmm. and they all referenced each other and um and, and you'd want to not throw them away and uh i was dealing with one bloke recently he was explaining he got a couple of secondhand copies from ebay and i was like yeah it means somebody has enough <laughs> thought that they have worth value to actually follow after they've read it you know so yeah slingshot why, why slingshot why 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 slingshots why was that the chosen kind of uh Lane to go down, why was that? Why, why on earth? Where's the passion? Well, it was. It's. It's been one of the the great sort of lures forever, and I've always um, ridiculously managed to make my living, double edged sword, working with things I've always really loved. So I've worked with the Angler's Mail magazine, shut by time a little while, time life, time Warner, the publishers, a couple of years back now. Um, I wrote about great big speaker systems in Home Cinema Choice magazine. Um, I wrote about car audio system things I really loved. And uh, as a lad, I was a severely slingshot addicted dude to the point where it bent my thumb back at 90 degrees. If that doesn't make you go, uh, it's a bit nasty. Sorry. <laughs> and it formed my bones, man. <laughs> it's one of my images in the, the magazine. It just means I had a genetic squashy bone thing going on. But um, it was all about uh, a book, um, which is right here, actually. Yeah, it's right here, live. I'm going to reach for it. Ooh, tatty thing. I'm going to make a confession here. 
This book was stolen from the library at Haberdasher's Ask School, the same place where Sasha Baron Cohen, Damon Hill, and David Bedil and me went. It's BB's. Brendan Chase. Oh, that was a stamp. I thought I'd hide it. Anyway, point is, look it up. Brendan <laughs> Chase by BB. It's all about some posh lads who run away and live in the woods. Um, they kind of steal the gardener's gun, but they've also got a catapult, um, a glorious lethal weapon, they described it as. But the whole thing, thing was, I was bored looking out the window at school one day, wanting so much not to be in geography, and I'm looking down at the backfield, and there's all these things moving around. Them. It was pheasants. Um, I'm actually... I started, and this is one of the questions is what's coming next, but Confessions of a Schoolboy Poacher started off sneaking up on him and it's too stupid and bop and taking him into cookery lessons in the girls' school um, and uh, went through the dead shot catapult and then I got a Goliath um, and then got a whammo copy of the uh, the wrist rockets of the people who made frisbees um, and it sort of went on from there and then it went very dormant and Oh, dear, I twisted a shoulder and I was sent to a physiotherapist. And when they tried to give me some Theraband gold, I went, oh, I know better than that. I've got some quarter inch at home. <laughs> so there were two year, wasted years before I discovered really what was happening with modern slingshots. So when it was, it was like, oh my God. Um, and I spent a couple of years researching, um, playing around with it and thinking, I really want to make my own magazine about this because there was the perfect storm. Home Cinema Choice uh, kind of came to an end for me um, as it shrank. Uh, they closed the fishing magazine and um, the fast car magazine went from print to online only. Although I'm now working for them again, thankfully, which is nice after a while. But the main plot was, I thought, why not? You know, you've, you've discussed this with so many editors so many times. And if I can get a designer, why not do this yourself? I mean, you've got to sell the adverts. There's so many plates you have to spin because there's all these different people you have to get to work with it. But uh, I thought I'll do my own. Um, and uh, if I'd known how much grief it was the first time, I probably wouldn't have. But the thrill of actually seeing <laughs> you work in print, and it is uh, so much fun, um, was uh, you know, enough to drive me onwards. So I've, I've carried on doing it for quite some time now. And the, th the first issue was 2018, is that correct? It was, yeah. It was, uh, it was quite a while back now. They've been sporadic because the industry isn't like hi-fi where things go out of date and there's something new every season, there's certain shows they go to. Because it is the shooting man's, the poor man's shooting sport, I should say. Um, there's no two ways about that. It's never been loads and loads of new stuff all the time. It's been about here's some new kit here, here's some new kit there. Um, and really, truly, if you want to report on it, you want to do it at the same speed as that. Plus, there's only so much, you know, rapidity with which you can turn out that much work and have it be worth anything and be decent quality and uh, and resonate and still be of value later. I want it not to go too out of date. I want you to be able to go back in years to come and go, oh, you still get them and click it and go, oh, they're still there. So I'm always very keen to make sure the people involved have been ones that actually can last a while. Difficult with people who tie rubber bands because they only last sort of three to five years at the most. But other than that, it's hopefully all a sort of lasting value was the, uh, was the main urge. So, obviously, you're on your six. You've done your sixth issue now. What, 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 what do you think's contributed to being to it being so successful? Um, well, that was you know, interesting. You say hobby's quite small. <laughs> it's yeah. uh, you say so successful. I think it's just bloody stubbornness um, in keeping on doing it. Because the uh, thing is, the magazine pays its own bills. But as far as so successful, it doesn't really pay any mind. Um, which is uh, sort of another issue. It's just about the passion, how much I love doing it, um, and the fact that I'm a magazine journalist and I don't know what else to do. Uh, I can do a little bit of daily presenting, and I'm on the wireless from time to time, but um, it's something that, that I've always had to do. I've mostly been a reviewer, and that's something which translates well to this market because one of the questions I got was how are you sort of unbiased when representing all of these many brands and names and stuff. Yes. And that's 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 an easy one, actually. That's forgive me, it's kind of a little slurp of water. Um, that isn't actually that hard a problem. And it has a name, which is the journalistic tightrope, which is if I read something in a magazine, I want to know that the bloke telling me is doing it from his heart. He's not making it up because he's in the pay or something. Otherwise, it's worthless crap. Quite rubbish. Mm -hmm. Likewise, um, I don't go, oh, it's only in there because the bloke's advertising. Now, sadly, making magazines cost so much that, generally speaking, you do kind of have to go, yeah, these are the big players. I've got an advert from them. I can write about them here. They have to accept that you're going to write what you write and that it's going to be honest. And therein lies the interesting bit because you really, there's one or two people you don't ever want to deal with. 
<laughs> Boink. They don't exist anymore. The man was so proud about making copies and rip-offs, um, although his, uh, whatever it is, thing, I think it was his actual design, is on the cover of Issue 2 in the hand of Shabba. It's the one that sold out Pretty Girl. She's smiling about the Mona Lisa. It's her boyfriend saying something <laughs> disgust, disgusting to her. He was rude. It was brilliant. She's sort of like, <laughs> and there it is. People, oh, I'll buy that one. It's great. It's sold out. But yeah, the uh, fact is, they've all got their own thing to offer. So, Wassling Shots, Wassling Shots, you're talking about um, the affordable, the mostly, well, they're cast in plastic mostly. They've got some G10 ones. Um, you've got Pro Shot. Um, and <clears> they're <throat> all about cast ironmongery, most beautiful aluminium, brass, and uh, bronze sling shots. Um, and <laughs> of course, Simple shot. Um, Guy has got the most fabulous designs from Mark Selden. Again, mostly injection molded, but it's all about more having different things to offer and not treading on each other's toes. And in the case of simple shot and pro shot, you've got the American company, the English company. The English company imports the American company stuff, and everybody gets on. Is, is the hope. Um, sometimes, if your reporting is good enough, you get an effect known as the lion lies down with the lamb, and that's when a journalist is showing off and going, "This bloke bloody hates this bloke." But they're all in my magazine, <laughs> which was the lovely thing that Jörg Sprav, Clang Dropper name, said to me when he I did get to interview him, which he said, your magazine, I really like it, but everybody is in it, which was just the biggest single compliment the bloke could have paid me, really, you know, which was to say that um, it's one or two. I've never been able to crack, though. It's like, I'd love that lovely fella from Catapult Carnage to get involved, but I don't think he wants to. <laughs> That's that like Chris Graffin, <laughs> top man, the one with the, uh, the wrapped up frames. Beautiful. Um, mm. And there's uh, there's another sort of bloke who's... Chris, uh, Chris from uh, Captain yeah. Planet. Yeah, he's better looking, sounds nicer, and shoots darts through apples live <laughs> on the video. I, I can't compete with that, you know what I mean? It's not about competing, because you know, really, I'm just kind of like reporter, you know, I'd like to... That's the skill, really. So how, how much of it... How, how much of it is information from, um, you know, the guys that are creating these things, and how much of it is from your own personal kind of perspective? Um, are they oh, actually well, telling really, you what they want in the magazine? Or? Uh, well, the idea is, if you're an editor worth your salt, you should be able to take a pace back and go, well, what would I like to see in a magazine? If I'm getting Slingshot World magazine, what do I want? I want to go, oh, yeah, that's really interesting. That's new. That's cool. I didn't know how to do that. Oh, you've really spoken to this boat. You've got hold of him. I want to find out about the stuff. I don't really want to hear about how cool you might think you are, mate. So I try to keep that. My name's only in it in a few places, and I don't make a big deal out of you know, who and what, so that there are some, most people seem to think it's a whole team of us. And that I'm just sort of in charge. And it's like, uh, no, it's just me my, and that designer. In fact, the really important one is the designer because writing words in a row and making sure the commas and full stops are in the right place really is just a function of having been slightly dyslexic as a kid and spelling the magic word the incorrectly in front of a class of kids. And they all laughed at me, including the teacher. So now I kind of remember more words than most people. And I'm about, I'm about far behind Stephen Fry, perhaps, for the use of English, which is a disgusting, <laughs> great big brag. But it does mean that. Actually, the use of English uh, correctly and what is spelt, it's actually horribly rare. That's now a skill. That's a sellable thing. How many videos do you have on YouTube where you have an automated voice because somebody can't read it out? And my main YouTube channel is called Presenter Bloke because I'm an arrogant git. But uh, the one which I'd like you to go and see is Slingshot World TV on YouTube. Shameless plug for my channel there. So, uh, no, and of course, the, uh, the magazine is at Slingshot World Co. UK. I will say the magazine, the website's there, and you can go and click. And one of the things that actually makes this work is because it is such a niche magazine, and you're wondering, how the hell is this, what is it makes it successful, is the digital versions that you don't have to pay for. If I'm asking you for a slice of money for an advert, you want return on it. You're not just going, out, I like you because you're fat. Yeah, I'll give you some money. It doesn't work like that. They want to know what's some return on investment. Oh, how many people can you talk to? How many people see this? Um, and the print magazine's all very well, but then online, once a new one comes out, the one before that goes for free, um, and you can click it, and it opens up. And it's, it's called a flip book. Uh, the first one, it's even got videos embedded in it, and I did a complete audio book version of it. You can hear me reading the whole of issue one on on the Slingshot World TV on, uh, on YouTube, but, wow, it's hard work. I'm afraid I never did more than the one. But as far as seeing the mags for free, issues one to five are already on the uh, free flipper. Um, and everything except number two is still available. And the uh, main thing is there's some really cool stuff in there, all sorts of uh, how-tos, rare things from around the world. The stuff like this that I think this is the only one in the UK 
this is this is a serious starship, right? This is just you hold it there, right? And it reaches all up there. But check this out. What's that? That bit there? That that's that's a that's a an archery weight from Saunders because they deal with bows and arrows. Have you have you heard of anybody else having one of these in the bleeding part of our part of the way? No, it's kind of unheard the first of. First time I've ever seen it. It's a crazy looking piece of kit, isn't it? Bonkers. It is. Um, and that's a that's a piece I mean, of it. It's I don't a, know if you can fit it in your pocket, but <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's a uh, not very pocketable, Governor. No, not really. <laughs> I, I do love that though. There's but, um. That's like the last article in the magazine is called Adventures, Scrapes and Misdemeanors. Um, and if you do read that, there are some shocking revelations in terms of personal confessions. And and the magazine does have so, quite a lot. If you read all of it, you'll find embarrassing things about my relationship with my father and how crap it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I bear me so Where, where do you there. get these articles from? Where, where, where do you get these from? Because obviously, you know, when we're looking at kind of advertising, is it different kind of, you know, it's on a different spectrum to kind of writing articles. Do people reach out to you or are you kind of getting out there and finding all the, all the, all these cool stories? Well, um, the journalist generally shows off about who they know. You know, it's like, and that is really, truly the skill. I have got, hello, mate, how are you? Personal relationships to go on a business sort of personal, on a business basis. Certainly very good at at, at, uh, at Pro Shot up in Sheffield. The guys at Wasp, love them to bits, a pair of them. I've, I've got some wonderful, wonderful stories about them and theirs. Um, various other makers are proper matey with. Um, Nathan Masters at Simple Shot has been a supporter of the magazine from from day one. Um, people like Jim Harris, at, uh, who runs um, uh, Performance Catapults and who makes the legendary SPS, is another chap. I mean, basically, you have to phone these people up and talk to them. Um, and getting to actually go to meet your heroes, um, like Jorg, is is really you know that that's the big skill. That's 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 kind of kind of what I do. And how you do that is actually dare to phone people up with some sort of good reason to or get in contact in some way that, mm-hmm. that makes them think well this is actually reasonably worthwhile and it's professionalism is a piece of it but um it's just you know because journalist i suppose it's one of those <coughs> pardon me one of those things that's that's the, the the thing that i bring to the table is writing about it and, and loving it and is is important but it really is about it's about the people and, and getting to know them and what's next for you? I mean, can, can we get an exclusive here? Um, is, is there anything that we're going to kind of get in the future? How long are you planning on carrying this on for? Um, do, do, no we know that? do we know for, the answer to that though, question yet? Although there is a certain significance to the number seven in slingshots, isn't there? A lucky number seven thing. Mm-hmm. The horseshoe gypsy slingshot with seven holes drawn in it. And another three up the side on each side. Um and uh, I've got a, <laughs> I've got a little thing on the uh, the plot for, for cover of issue seven. But um, basically, as long as people are still reading it and wanting it, I think I'll I'll I'll, I'll try and keep on going. The mm, I suppose those things, should you talk about it before you've done it? But I have already mentioned it. Yeah, there's something I've done quite a lot of, and I think I need to crack on and finish. Which is a little book, Confessions of a Schoolboy Poacher. All about the posh public school boy who ended up running off to the woods and um, taking pheasant into general studies cookery and telling the teacher that it was rabbit and her telling me that I should go to catering school in Switzerland. Yeah, I was... <laughs> <laughs> Everything tasted amazing. Absolutely. So the, there's that. And, um, yeah, the... Uh, um, as I say, the, the issue seven is, is something I'm getting heavily into right now. So... Uh, Please, some more of the same, and uh, and yeah, oh, oh god, I was busy making up because I'm obviously clearly busy trying to remember something. What a fool, Mark Clark, wonderful raconteur, has written a whole bunch so far, twelve chapters of a book, which a small thing we're calling King of the Wheel, and we need an illustrator because he wants art in it as well. Um, just bloody wonderful. One of those actually forms the uh, adventure scrapes and misdemeanors in the back page of uh, Stinchot World. Traditionally, the last article you read in the magazine is the one that leaves you with sort of happy memories of it and make you want to go out and get another one. So, um, yeah, coming up, uh-huh. Confessions of a Schoolboy Poacher and Mark Clark's book, King of the World, probably before that. We'll keep an eye on that, definitely. Uh, so, obviously, you've been involved in Slingshots um, quite heavily. As Like you said, you've known a lot of people 
What do you think's changed the most um, with Slingshots themselves and the community in general? Oh, on what time scale? What, just in the last few months or years or overall, whole thing? Uh, what sort of time well, scale yeah, are we talking well, about just recently? Since or? you've been... Uh, you, you, uh, last, well, since, since, let's say since Slingshot World magazine's been about. So since 2018. Oh, right. Okay. okay. Well, well first off... Go a little bit of audio break. First off, though, the, the big one was people coming back from the uh, big championships in Italy going, we've been shooting hand cannons. They laughed at us with our 9.5. No, it was China. People went to China with 9.5s, and it was like, 9.5s? It was like, we were shooting cannonballs. And what they can do was so astonishing. So there was this of ammo to like eights and sixes and so forth. And uh, to this day, there's people who shoot, plenty of people shoot eights. Um <clears throat> The uh, love of Theraband going from, oh, this stuff's really cool, to, have you seen these new elastics? Through to now, Theraband is uh, totally uncool, even though those people still adore it and it's consistent. There's folks who still use it. And just lately, there's been a trend going back to the sort of humongous cannon-sized LEDs, um, big bands, and uh, a resurgence in the strod, which I thought was the old word for catapult in general, but I now know really just means the u-shaped frame with handle somebody's welded from steel usually from a bit of old rebar to be honest because it's cheap um there's a chap called dan layton layton's strods and catties he calls it and yeah. the strod they're referring yeah. to is the inner frame um and that's been a huge huge growth to the point where i think i'm gonna have to include that in ec7 we've got carl Tomastra wrapping up a strod frame um beautifully handled by another lad who's made just the uh the handle as a special thing for putting on a strod frame rather than it being from a carving set or something. I saw somebody get a Crown Derby dining set. They're going to take all the cutlery out of it and turn it into catapults. Cool. Reuse. I think that's... Uh, uh, <laughs> it's definitely a UK thing as well, because I've, I've not seen too much of that overseas, to be honest with you. Um, these strods that I'm seeing are all kind of based with people here in the UK. I'm not sure whether yeah. you, you, know, you have a different opinion on that. Um, but no, no, absolutely. It's cultural. It's national. Yeah, it's a magazine and... Yeah, we've all got our own flavours. The uh, the Hispanic, the, the Spanish in particular, um, have got that. I've had that target scene forever. With this mad passion. There's Gaspar Arcon, who is like mm -hmm. crazed target completely, absolutely like an Olympic flipping competitor. It's amazing. Uh -huh. um, and those big upright things you have to hold sort of with a big fistful of stuff and um, different. I, I do love the I do different love uh, this, this this one is from Costa Rica. I, I put it in shot for the. What I'd carefully arranged with the uh, Apple camera, of course, is slightly different. But this, this is cute. This is this is this is kind of ethnic. Yes, Puerto Vida. This is what I themed the issue six around, but that's kind of cute. So, but yeah, I do like the uh, also ethnic differences yeah. in in string shots. You got the the gypsy thing. This is Asa Wilson's finest, made basically to show off what you could do as a raffle prize for a big shoot. A couple of people bought and sold it, and I was able to snap it up. It's absolutely beautiful. The workmanship in it is insane. There's so many Stunning. beautiful, beautiful things. It's the same thing with fishing tackle and lovely fishing rods. You know. But yeah, I do love the uh, the, the workmanship, the slingshot craftsmen out there, and and the people involved. It's uh, it's a hell of a community. It is. It is. Um, talking to the community, I've had some questions come in for you. Oh, you have? Um, Ooh. <laughs> I didn't know I was expecting any. <laughs> Exciting. No, we've got some, we've got, we've got some questions. You, you, you may know some of these guys, um, but anyway, they, they want your answers. So let's, let's get on with the first one. This one's from our friend of the show, which is Mark from ATO over in Canada. Yeah. Um, so he wants to know where the, where the passion comes from for writing, which you've sort of touched on. Um, already. Um, oh, that's really simple. Um, that's really simple. There's a Wikipedia entry. If you, I wasn't going to do this, but Google Claire Rayner OBE. There we go. There we go. <laughs> yeah. we'll, I'm sure we'll have a look at yeah, I mean, that. Mama was, was a household name. Um, she's been dead a long, long time now, but she was a household name. She used to say, What a heartbeat, darling. Household name. Um, she was an agony aunt. Um, she wrote 92 books, 82 of which were in print at peak. The uh, medical editor was over 30 years was the least of it. She was on television all the time. She was on an audience with um, like Freddie Starr. And, and she was known for being the risque one who could talk about oral sex on television. Oh, it's just kissing. Don't be so silly. She was like the uh, everybody's mama. And she was in the sun as the agony aunt for many years before Deirdre Sanders. So she was, um, they called her the queen mother of agony aunts. 
and as I say, was a heck of a writer. So yeah, that's, that's why I'm, I'm second generation. I grew up; it was almost inevitable um, that I was going to end up as some kind of writer, even about something she knows nothing about, knew nothing about. There you go. Mark. So not oh, only yeah. did you have stars <laughs> around you in school, uh, your mother was a star as well, I suppose, because uh, well, well she was dead. you went to school. With yeah, they, they were just kids at school, but uh, she was kind of dead famous to get you know get recognised while out, sort of thing. And, um, famously, there was a ticket tout once who came up and tried to give it a load. Oh, do you want your ticket up? Because she'd already got one. And for our was the show we were going to, which was our yearly treat, Boxing Day. Um, but anyway, this guy was thought it'd get a bit funny of that, and um, and and uh, she hated ticket touts. So she called him come with you like this, and he started to get a bit inflated. And I just came up to it. That's my mother you're talking to, mate. Real loud. And he went <laughs> sort of deflated. It was hilarious, but to, yeah, the. Uh, Generally speaking, it was it was great fun. The uh, the things that had happened, although especially with current things, it was no big deal. But she famously wrote about um, um, psychosexual issues and medical things. And and day would come home from school, me and my brother, and there was a bunch of transgender folk getting changed in our bedrooms into the way they felt most comfortable to be interviewed, um, which they didn't want to travel in public looking like, which is different now, which is good. Um, and it was no big deal. It was just like, is there enough bread? We're gonna have some toast in the kitchen. And... <laughs> It was really not such a big deal. I found the whole sort of fuss about adding extra things to the uh, the group of folks that rather strange because it was always just common sense stuff, darling, in, in, in my upbringing. No big deal. So, and... <laughs> but yeah, it was a strange upbringing. Um, I got to be doing on telly a fair old bit. First time a full-size broadcast camera's pointed in my face was nine. So yeah, for Mark oh, in Canada, so you'd have been aware of the American star, Dr. Ruth. She was the equivalent in the UK of Dr. Ruth, so I hope that answers it. Hopefully that answers that. So that is the passion. That's where the, that's where the passion is, I suppose, is in your blood. Um, the next, well, set of questions, I suppose I should call them, is from uh, Alex Davidson, who I've had All on right. the podcast before. Um, mm -hmm. So he wants to know, do you prefer hunting or, tar or the target size of shooting, and why? Confession time. I did some shooting at school on the range and never confessed it anywhere because I gave it jolly equal equanimity. And, and I view target shooting as practice for getting a pheasant for your tea. <laughs> it is, it's, it's about one for the pot. You know, there's people who's been unpopular about killing things, you bastards. But um, yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's about the hunting really for me. Yeah, absolutely. It's about being in the woods and, that sound and, and being at one with nature and eating it. <laughs> That's why I love Zachary Fowler. Good point. Very good point. Um, so what inspired you to, uh, what's inspired you to make the magazine, which again, we touched on, this always happens. Uh, oh, no, this was very straightforward. It was a collective death of the, uh, of print and other parts of my career um, where fast car went from print to not print and they didn't know where the money was coming from. So they couldn't just take big adverts and take money from people. Home Cinema Choice and I stopped working with each other and I sacked them in actual fact, believe it or not, over a, somebody trying to influence reviews and the fact that mostly people use sound bars instead of big subwoofers. Uh, fishing magazine got shut um, and I'm like blowing spit bubbles going, what should I do? I actually thought, I love this stuff. What about making your own magazine? Because publishers can do it. And I still knew the designer who did Fast Car and still does and various other things. And that, that was it. It was like big, arrogant. So our job's involved, but I kind of know about what's been talking about it with people for 20 years. Why not do it myself? So that was it. It was. It really was. It was get all the stuff together and send it off to the printers. And and we did. And the main really, really hard run was that first thing, that arrogant, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, when you're selling the first ads for the first issue, when you got, look at this, um, a big, big public thank you to Peter Hogan of Pro Shot because he went, yeah, to a quite serious spend on an advert, totally on faith. Didn't even necessarily believe it was actually going to happen. And when it did, he was like, this is the best money I've ever spent on my business. <laughs> Brilliant. I love it. Well done. I'm like, didn't you believe me? But well, I kind of just sort of wanted to. And I was like, he didn't put it that way, but that was kind of what was behind it. So it was the uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna brag about oh look what I've done to actually get the first one off the ground felt really uncomfortable, but it's been it's well. yeah, it, it it has worked and uh, I'm still thankfully makes the most of them. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. So the next one uh is from John. Um what is your all time favorite slingshot? Oh dear, that is a classic sort of you know. Who's your favourite baby? Um, <laughs> I've got some wonderful, wonderful things here. 
um, from your show and tell. I'll tell you what, the latest awesomeness, Danny Sherwood, look at that. I mean, look at that and go, you lucky... Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, God, uh, this thing, this is very rare. That's made by John Jeffries. The top half is different to the bottom half in terms of different animals. The crown is completely vertical. Mm -hmm. The fork is completely symmetrical. He had to go through 40 antlers to find it. The final polish on this antler was done with an old non-plastic five-pound note. Just awesome. Um, the one I keep in the car is made by a man uh, used to call himself Whippet. Hang on, hang on. the one you keep in the car. <laughs> there is there is one in the car. This is a normal thing. We just keep one. <laughs> well, there's, the there's, there's one. It has to be in somebody with several knots, I and mean, it has to be totally separate. So you can't just go, oh, I was going to shoot out the window. But I've got a targety thing in the back of the car, and yeah, I keep some fishing kit and some. Oh God, there's a trap. Wouldn't you want to get that? Yes, absolutely. Um, there's quite a lot of stuff I do. I keep. I've got a cross country Volvo, and uh, yeah, I keep stuff in it. But in particular. That was one of the first ones I got. Um, dropped it in the field twice at the first year I got given got given it back because it was just lovely. People were nice, but I, I don't know maybe that's a favourite. But really, truly, um, I'm a complete slingshot slutty tart, and I love it. <laughs> which is one of the requirements I think for being an. I only like this one. I'm only pretending to like the other ones. Is me? Oh, really? It really is just like. You know, a child in a sweetie shop going, oh, that's wonderful. Here's a lemon one. Oh, well, that chocolate is really nice. Oh, you feel sick? Have a sherbet dip, dab. Oh, my God. Look at that. <laughs> um, it is. It's. I mean, take one look. Greedy man. It's a part of greed. It's all a piece of a personality. So there you go. It's uh, difficult to pick a, a, a favourite because I'm such a greedy git. I want them all. Believable. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I want them all. Yeah. Well, that's brilliant. Is, is it just before we uh, we get off there, Adam? Is there anything that you want to kind of uh, talk about? Um, we have covered a great deal. I'm quite happy that you've announced that there will be more Slingshot magazines uh, coming on the horizon. But is there anything else that you kind of want to just uh, touch on here? Um, I guess the only uh, thing would be, I mean, it's a general appeal, but it won't make any flaming difference at all. Is that do have a look at the um, the Milbro video about is yours a real one? There's so much absolute hogwash and piffle spoken about Milbro old slingshots. And it's not that big and complicated a deal because I managed to go and interview the guy who is the definitive provenance collector of these things. Um, and the only reason there's so many of them is because basically they kept breaking down a lot. The wooden collets would come off. So you find one that's still complete with the wooden bits and it's terribly rare. Um, but there were so many people trying to rip each other off with them and it seems such a shame. Um, but there's no mystique to it. There was a little video in How to Tell Them Apart. Um, so that was the main thing. It's, uh, yeah, just be be careful when you you trade online because there's people been ripping each other off and that's always a shame in any scene. So, uh, But otherwise, um, I think the uh, the best way would be to do what finish away with it. Chuck Saunders of Saunders Archery says, which is shoot safely, honourably, and well. <laughs> Thank you very much for your time today, Adam. Thank you. Absolutely honoured to be here to be. Thank you so much. Cheers. No problem at all. See you soon.